So I got the transom all tacked in, a little bit of a welds on the outsides. It's all tacked down all the way. Both sides ended up getting it to fit uh, real nice against the bottom hole. So that's all good. It's just temporarily bolted into the hydro blaster. Come back, take a look at the aft section of it here. Nice tight fit. Got the adapter for the Kawasaki temporary bolted in there as well. I tack both inside and outside. I'm still trying to decide. At some of my jet sprints, I will only weld one side or the other. I might do both. The, uh, the tunnel welds, all that kind of stuff turned out really nice. Next thing is I'm getting ready to put the sides on. So should make some pretty good visual progress today anyway. Okay, and getting ready to put the sides on the uh, the RS race cap here. So it, the, you always try to think ahead and do things that are going to be difficult once you get parts on. So some of those things are gonna be, I'm gonna have a side right here. So it's gonna be hard to weld and get into that. So I go ahead and put a just a short weld on both sides of that. Same thing back here in the transom. I'm not afraid of putting a, a, a short weld like that. You're not going to get too much heat built up in the hole just by doing that. One other thing, I took that big brace off the middle, took another measurement across the, the over outside beam here, and it did shrink up about a quarter of an inch when I took that off. So I went ahead and welded another one in and then clamping it to the stringers. I welded it in here so that uh, you're clear to put the sides on. So that's the next step. One thing, um, when you are moving metal like this, you gotta get kind of creative. So this is the how I was able to spread that apart. If you just uh, jacked up in the middle, it's just gonna lift the whole thing up. So I put a couple ratchet straps to the outside. That way you're jacking up while holding the thing down. Now I'm gonna release that and that brace will hold it. Well, man, this is one uh, tough job as a single man show here. This is one of those times where I wish I had a helper. Just tacked on the right side of the boat. I started at the very aft corner, made sure it was lined up. This, these are all edge to edge joints on the bottom, as well as the transom. So you gotta make sure those things are absolutely perfect. Uh, you start in the, this is where I start, in the aft corner, make sure it's tight to the bottom plate, make sure it's tight to the transom. And then I put a few tacks up this way, and then I started working my way forward. Um, Obviously, this pint isn't going to move, so that uh, better be in the right spot, and it uh, worked out just fine. Your best friends on these things are a really thin screwdriver for wedging in here and prying these out and back in, as well as a ball-peen hammer. I didn't know this until uh, I took those classes in uh, community college a long time ago. Once you hit a tack, if you have a little bit of gap there, you can just tap those things back in there and get a nice, tight fit. But this is what it all looks like. The whole right side is on tacked into the transom as well that all worked out pretty good i had to trim out a little bit of the um, when they cnc cut that out and then did the bend there was a little bit of material i had to cut out to make that thing nice and uh, tight but it all came together you just have to take your time with me by myself i think this took this side here took me about two and a half hours to get on you can see on the inside it all turned out really good. The uh, the joints nice and tight and didn't have any issues. It just took a long time and a lot of patience to get that in. This is how I did it. Again, I put the saw horses um, underneath the chine because that's the 3 16 If you lay your plate on there like that, it's going to be laying too low. So I put it on the saw horse, put a piece of scrap like that to set it on there. That way it's the right height and then start working your way across. These little ratchet straps were essentially a, a second hand for me once I put it up there and got it in place just to start going by myself. Um, a lot of ratchet straps, a lot of hammering, or ball peen hammering that is, and, uh, but it's on there. So my goal today was to get the transom on both sides on. So it looks like I got about, about two and a half, three hours to go today. We'll update you on that progress. Uh, what's the saying? Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. Well, I guess today I was the bug. It kind of kicked my butt today. Um, I installed the transom, I installed both sides, and I installed the upper sides on the bow deck there. But it was not easy. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was just one of those days, and I feel like Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Uh, there's at one point I was going to get into make sure that the midship deck or the bulkhead rather was still fitting right. 
And in doing so, when I climbed into the boat, I popped off about eight tacks on one of the sides. So that uh, that was just frustrating because then you got to grind those out and reshape everything. Not reshape, but refit everything. And that took uh, that added another 45 minutes to an hour to my day. But the good news is I got done what I set out to get done today. The sides are on, the transoms on. It's, you know, it's all just tacked. Nothing is welded yet. I think tomorrow um, I'll have to look at the instruction manual, but I think the midship bulkhead is going to go in permanent. The footrest or the forward storage bulkhead is going to go in, and then maybe the bow deck as well. So I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera around and show you what it was done today thanks for subscribing thanks for liking the uh, the videos and if uh, any of you welders fabricators out there have any tips on putting these sides on i'd much appreciate it i thought that i have, have done enough of these in the jet sprint world um, that it would have been a little bit easier but uh, i think one of the biggest things is if you have a shop helper that would be uh immensely useful uh, doing this by myself it's very tough i'm always having to move straps around using jacks uh, pry bars you name it if i had one helper that would have uh, probably alleviated a lot of my frustrations today but anyway i will get this camera turned around and show you what was done so here it is i'm just going to do a quick walk around of it um all the tacks are in the uppers the main sides, the transom is all in. That was the midship bulkhead that I was messing around with earlier. Uh, yeah, made some progress today, but like I said, it was a little bit frustrating. The transom went in pretty good. The transom and the, this rear section all went in pretty good. Pretty good tight seams everywhere. That was pretty um, easy. Here's the uh, lower end of the transom. Everything lo is looking good down here. Super happy with this. It was just the, I think just the single, single operator doing these big long sides by myself was, was just wore me out. So here it is. So the good news is it is, uh, it's actually looking like a boat. All right, folks, here's the, uh, the bow deck assembly with uh, five stringers underneath of it for support. A couple items about this thing and how I did it. They, they drill center marks, uh, the CNC cutout does, so that makes the center one being pretty much a no-brainer on alignment. They, again, more metric stuff. They had you set back 25 millimeters. I just went an inch um, compensated for that and put a spring clamp on there and then kind of a rolling motion because there's some arc to these things to get some strength and some arc to the bow just kind of rolled it up and tacked it as i went and then i don't know if it was 240 millimeters or i went nine inches in between each one and did the exact same thing on that my lesson on this is um the instructions talk about doing a cold weld and with very tra fast travel speed in order to stop getting any marks on the bottom or actually on the top of the bow where it's most visible. I had a hard time getting my welder set up for that. Um, I, I switched over to 030 wire, found this under my bench, and well, it went okay for a little bit, and then it started gumming up in my welder. So I, um, after a couple tips, I went to a brand new spool and I could feel I could feel a difference in them. There one was uh, the newer one was definitely much uh, more firm. This one was just kind of soft. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. So then I had to reset up my welder. And this thing I've always had issues with um, thin material. So this is what I ended up welding it on. You can see over here. And the one problem with this uh, 212 is you don't get any immediate. Um, feedback on how many volts it's actually putting out so they just give you a thickness and look there's the eighth inch which this whole deck is i ended up finally getting it set up down around the 16 gauge and then messing with the wire feed speed that's my lesson that's the wire feed speed on my spool mate right there my lesson on that is to take your time which i was a little bit impatient this morning getting going Get a scrap piece of metal and run a bunch of different uh, combinations until you're comfortable with that. Checking the backside. You're always going to probably get some sort of a welt on the backside. 
But take your time, get a scrap piece of metal and get your welder set up before you dive into something like this. Yes, folks, that is the bow deck on there. It is actually starting to look like a boat at this point. So it's kind of exciting. A couple things to lessons learned on this. I use a ratchet strap to make sure that the uh, this thing was pulled up nice and tight. This joint right here, still kind of warm, is going to get ground flush so that the windscreen can uh, fit nice and flat on that. So I put a very heavy chamfer on there and then I also put a, a small strip of 3 16 underneath there so that when you weld down there and grind that off, if you don't have a heavy chamfer and a backing plate in there, you're not gonna have very much weld left holding that thing together. So I did that on both sides, turned out great. I also went ahead at this point, I did this vertical weld down there on both sides. Um, that's just because I wanna I want to take this, uh, this clamp off here, the ratchet strap, and to hold everything together. It is, with that bow deck on there, this thing is really starting to stiffen up and not be as floppy uh, because essentially everything is connected at this point. So next step, I believe, is the windscreen. So I'm gonna fab that up on the bench top and hopefully get it at least tacked in position today as well but pretty exciting the little rs rs ravecraft skookum is actually starting to look like a boat talking a lot about the importance of a chamfer on a butt joint this is the ridge cap to the windscreen you can see i chamfered both sides of it top and bottom what you're going to do is tack weld the ends then run one of these just a streamer of a weld Nothing, uh, no reason to swirl this at all since it's going to ground flush. You're going to grind this side, weld the back side, then grind them both, and you're going to have a nice solid butt weld, 100% welded. Well, I just showed you how to do the, uh, again, the, uh, the proper chamfer technique for doing a butt weld on the, uh, the windscreen cap plate, also known as the gutter that, or a spray diffuser, if you will. Uh, again, really nice part of the CNC stuff is they come with a center line mark. So you just line up that both the cap and the windscreen have that. So you start with a tack there. I did about three or four tacks each side, alternating back and forth, work my way around. And this thing is ready to go on the boat. That whole thing probably took me about five minutes. Well, there's the windscreen installed. And if it wasn't looking like a boat before, it is totally looking like a boat now. Really the only big items left to install are going to be the midship bulkhead, which runs right across to that uh, recess in the gunnel. And then also I'm going to put a, um, it's a kick plate slash forward storage bulkhead up front. Here's what the inside of the transom looks like. Back side of the windscreen. I guess the dash still has to go in there or the instrument cluster, if you will. So there is the windscreen on there. Here is what the forward storage bulkhead looks like. The surround circles are cutouts for speakers. The square cutout is for access to a dry storage area up in the front. I just got off the phone with Ronnie. I'm not planning on putting a speaker system or any kind of stereo system in here. So I'm actually going to dry line from this corner up to there. And then from there down to here and make that essentially one big undo that on both sides make that essentially one big access to the dry storage up there um he said that's uh he said a lot of people will actually take these and cut them in halves or thirds so it's not structurally needed for the boat however it does going to give some added support to the uh the upper deck up there I decided to go ahead and cut out that uh, recess out of the forward bulkhead. Oh man, that sun is washing that out pretty bad. So this is uh, going to be a much larger opening for that while still providing some support for the uh, upper deck. There's the piece that got cut out. Use the meat saw for that. That thing is so handy. Can't, uh, can't begin to describe how useful that little saw is. I also put the, just to kind of put it in there to see what it's going to look like. I put in the uh, instrument cluster up there, just placed in there right for now. I'm still trying to decide what all I'm going to use for that kind of stuff with this Kawasaki glove box entrance and all that other kind of stuff. I decided to call it a day, and uh, we'll talk more here in a sec. 
We're going to call that the end of day 4.5. Uh, yesterday was a pretty long day, about eight hours, and today was only about a half of a day. So um, because I was so kind of frustrated and um, working my butt off yesterday, honestly putting those sides on, I didn't get a lot of video shot. So I'm going to combine yesterday and uh, today. That's kind of funny. Today was... Uh, Kind of more materialistic or visual stuff like the windscreen, but they sure does make you feel good when those things go on because it starts looking more and more like a boat. It's kind of like instant gratification. The sides were were tough yesterday. Um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the little butt weld demonstration on what I'm talking about this whole time about uh, chamfer. Um, that thing worked out pretty well. Tomorrow's build uh, is going to be probably another half day. My neighbor Jesse, he races uh, sprint cars up at Skagit Valley racetracks and I go watch him tear it up. He's a pretty good <laughs> racer and I have yet to see him in his V8 car. He's been racing the, CE, uh, the 600cc um, Suzuki motorcycle um, micro sprints, I think they're called up at Deming. So I have yet to see him drive his big car. So I want to go up and watch him tomorrow do that. Um, what else? So tomorrow I think I'm going to install the midship bulkhead, get that forward storage bulkhead uh, in position and after, honestly other than that it's probably about time to start welding this thing out there's not a whole lot in fact there's no more structural stuff that need to go in it they're all attachments like the fuel tank um, brackets and things like that so it is time to uh, wrap this thing up and start welding it out we'll talk more about that um, with to with the next video and we'll call that one uh, probably day 5.0 uh, if you will that's gonna be a pretty long day you have to take your time move around a lot let the try your best to not let the heat get built up too much in that bottom plate or any of the plate really it will start twisting and and uh, curving and stuff like that so there's going to be a lot of uh, clamping and uh, like i said just moving around and taking my time so that's going to be a fairly full day of weld out hope you are, are enjoying these videos uh, i do apologize for the lack of uh footage on putting those sides on hopefully i made up for it today with some with some uh, kind of how-to stuff. Once again, thanks for joining the channel. Thanks for watching as uh, this thing progresses along. I am kind of digging this, uh, the RS Racecraft, uh, Wattscraft look. It, uh, to me, it looks like what minis were, it looks very New Zealandish. I like the look of it a lot. Um, I think a lot of these things start to look kind of boxy and bargy. Uh, this thing has got very sleek lines. I really like the slope and the shape of the windscreen. It looks great. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons I went with it as well. Just aesthetics. I've kind of always been into the aesthetic part of uh, boats like that. It's very easy to make aluminum just look boxy, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, I'll get on with it, get this thing uploaded. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down in your right-hand corner. like to hear your comments, uh, good and bad. If you're seeing stuff you d disagree with that I do, I'm absolutely open for input. You like some things that I'm doing by all means I've I've had very little instruction so if you're a pro at this and I'm doing something right let me know because I I kind of make this stuff as I've built like I said about 10 boats but it'd be really good to hear from an absolute pro if um, for positive reinforcement as well as corrections if you see something I'm absolutely doing wrong again thanks for watching